David's song, Psalm 18, which has also brought some changes. Well, what changes? Is Psalm 18 a changed version of what we find in Sefer Shmuel? Or is what we find in Sefer Shmuel the edited one of what we find in Tehillim? There are quite a few Mepharshim. Amos Chacham has a good essay about this, that it seems that Psalm 18 is the definitive version. Now, what is a... What is the introduction there? What does it say? David sang the song when? He would sing the song every time God would save him from all his enemies and from Saul. Saul uh, met his ultimate downfall when David was only 30 years old and before David took the throne. David had many more wars. Up until that point, David either fought wars for Am Yisrael as an agent of Saul and then as his independent uh, leader of his own militia. Afterwards, he had his own army of Judah. Seven years later, he was king of all of Israel. So for 33 years, he was king of Israel, and he had many wars of conquest for Am Yisrael. As king of Judah and as, yeah, I guess, the, his own captain of his own militia, he was not a big conqueror, right? He didn't really expand his territory at that point. It says he made one major territorial gain, which was actually gifted to him by Achish. Achish gave him Tziklag. So it says that was personal possession of the kings of Judah, but it wasn't like, as though he expanded Israelite territory yet. So David had many enemies. God saved him. So apparently this was his song. This was his victory song many times and for many decades. David had many great battles. And also it says when God saved him Saul, because we can't lump Saul with all his enemies. Either Saul is his greatest foe, or it's improper, it's not kavod of a tzaddik, an Israelite tzaddik, a Jewish tzaddik, to be lumped with the likes of these Edomites and Amalekites and Arameans who were all idolaters and did not deserve even to be mentioned. That's David's song. David's song concludes with words that were that uh, are reminiscent of a prophecy that he was given. His malchus is forever and God will always be on the side of the Davidians. Who always wins? Ultimately, David. And if not David, then his seed. Okay, We should live to see this speeding on our days. So that's what David has what to sing about. Why? Because he has a special relationship with God. God's always on his side. And like the Navi said, uh, David was chosen unlike, let's say, Saul, who had God's grace, but eventually God's grace was removed from Saul. Okay? as I removed, and then Saul was removed. God's grace was removed from Saul, and then Saul was removed from God's presence. Every other uh, line in Jewish history was destined to be temporary, and also uh, before David and after David, despite being the agents of, uh, of God's deliverance. The problem was, when King when David Melech, who was a phenomenal tzaddik also, has the magnifying glass applied to him, so he was punished that he's going. the sword is going to come out of his own house. So he's going to be persecuted by his own son. Who is that son ultimately? Of Shalom. And the problem is, David also had this promise from God. He was going to win. Of Shalom was, not, was only to basically cause David problems. David, nowhere in the story of Av Shalom's rebellion do we have the Novi come to David and Melch and tell him, don't worry, David and Melch, you're going to get through this. You know why? Because he didn't need a Navi to tell him that. He knew that that was going to be the case. He just knew that this was a temporary punishment, even though it involved terrible things happening, having to leave Jerusalem and go to Avery Yardane, losing his wives. There's a lot a lot going on there. But ultimately, he knew he had the Bitochon that he would win. Except what happened? How did this war re uh, resolve itself? He had, he had also given instruction what? He told his, peop his men, spare of Shalom. You could win the war, but spare his life. Bring him, bring him alive. But what happened? He was killed. And actually pretty pretty gratuitously. Yoav could have taken him as prisoner, but made the executive decision to, you know, just kill him, even though he was, you know, already disarmed. So what happened there? What's David's reaction? What was his reaction to this being told? He had a victory. The 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 heralds come and tell him, you know, it should happen, you know, great victory, everything's over. But yes, but what about Afshalom? What about the boy? So they told him in a nice way, like, well, he's a goner. So David's reaction was not this song. What was it? I could have been. So that's that's the sad irony of what 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 Hashem brought about to David Amalek, because great tzaddikim are, you know, they're they're kept to such high standards. He could not sing this song. 
Why? Because the David David's seed actually lost out in this case. Okay, so this is a. Uh, I don't. I guess try to understand how this works. David Melch, this was his victory song, but there was one time where he could not sing this song. Instead, he had to say something else. It had to end with a dirge. It had to end with with a kino. Why? Because it just didn't fit. It didn't fit the model, and that's why this was, in divine justice, a fitting punishment for David Melch. Okay, so understand that parsha. What is this? Why am I bringing this up now? Because sometimes God wants Am Yisrael to win, but. If Am Yisrael doesn't want to win, or if Am Yisrael has gotten to the point where right now we're in active punishment mode, or the rabbi talks about diaspora mode Judaism, exile mode Judaism, and redemption mode Judaism. The problem is you can't say Gullus, because Gullus and Geula both start with a G or with a Gimel, so it doesn't work. Okay, you know, G or, or, or Gimel. So we say diaspora and redemption. Redemption mode Judaism means that we're supposed to get back up. But the problem is if we squander all these opportunities, uh, we're going to lose. 